are you walking with God or with the devil? If you are not walking with God, then you are unknowingly walking with the devil. If you are not hearing from God, then you are hearing from the devil. If you are not going to God, then there is only one other place that you can go. And it's always up to you. It's your choice. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 10, verse, chapter 10, verse 10 the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. But I have to come to give you life more abundantly. So the devil comes only to destroy your life, kill, steal and destroy. Jesus says, I have come to give you life. I have come to give you an abundance of it. And so the devil uh, will have you think that you're going crazy. He will have you think that he, he, he will put you, deceive you into situations that are destructive, that are self-sabotaging, that are wrong, that are negative, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, spiritual bondage, stress, uh, doubt, guilt, and so on and so forth. He will have you think that your walk with God is in vain. He will have you think that um, it's all a waste. What you're, what you're doing, what you're going through, it's all a waste in the, on this path of God. He will, um, he will deceive you into thinking that it's, it's just no use. What are you doing? You're wasting your time. Just do, you, you know, change your path. He comes in. He, he's deceiving, and he comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-eight, in all things. In other words, in all things. God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. In other words, the devil is a liar. You know, he tells you your walk with God is in vain. All this you're going through is, 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 is a waste of time. It's no use. The devil is a liar. Because God is working all things out for your good. God is working things out for your purpose. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. And so the devil is a liar. You need to turn to God. You need to turn to God and resist the devil. Resist him. Because he's coming in and lying, filling you with deceit and, 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 and uh, uh, hijacking your mind and planting lies here, there and everywhere. You need to turn to God and, and resist the devil deny your flesh and stop walking in the ways of this world of this world which are not of God and you need to repent and start walking in your uh, in your walk in new walk with Jesus Christ you need to repent and if you fall down don't stay down you get back up and you repent again and God will forgive you and keep walking the path with Jesus being Christ-centered and spirit-led and if you fall again, then you just get back up again and you repent again and God will forgive you again. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 22, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. And Jesus replied, no, not seven, but 77. In other words, unlimited forgiveness. Jesus is telling Paul, you need unlimited forgiveness against your brothers and your sisters, against your brethren. You need unlimited forgiveness. Well, guess what? This is the same unlimited forgiveness that God has towards you. This is why God is telling you to be in this way, to act this way, to be this person of unlimited forgiveness. Because that is the character of God. He is a God of unlimited forgiveness. And so, but the enemy will have you believe that God, you know, you've done, you've, you've just done too much. God can't forgive you. This is, the devil's a liar. The devil is a liar. Because Jesus says not seven times, 77. He's telling him, Peter, unlimited forgiveness against your brethren. Continuous, constant forgiveness against your brethren. No one's telling you to get back into that relationship. No one's telling you to go out to dinner with that person. No one's telling you to mingle with that person again. But you do need to forgive them from your heart, regardless of if you allow them back into your life or not. But you do need to forgive them from your heart. Unlimited forgiveness. And so I encourage you, repent. Repent. Pray. Get in your Bible. Pray. Seek God with all your heart. And fast. You know, 
If God's leading you to a specific fast, stop avoiding it. Pray, read your Bible fast until you get that mess out of you. Whatever that mess is, whatever that, whatever that, whatever the mess is that the enemy is bringing to you, fast, pray, repent, get in your Bible, feed yourself with the spiritual word of God until you get that mess out of you. That mess could be anything from lies in the mind, a deceitful way of thinking, corruption in the heart, jealousy in the heart, evil speaking, bad actions, could even be things that you're not doing, like laziness, you're not doing anything. Whatever it is, repent, fast, pray, read your Bible until you get that mess out of you. Don't allow that mess to stay in you. Don't go to sleep with that mess in you. The more you leave that mess in you, the more it grows. We don't want that mess growing in us. The more it grows in us, the more it changes our character. We begin to show up in the world as that person. Because these are the things that are being produced in us. These are the things that are growing in us. So then we begin to speak like that. You notice the more you hold on to anger or irritation about a specific person, the more you become that person, the more you begin to think like that. Now you can't stop thinking horrible things about that person. Now it's in your heart, you're always angry regarding that person. Every time that name is mentioned, you get angry. Now you begin to speak like that, speaking behind that person's back, speaking badly about that person, judging them, criticizing them, either to yourself or to others. And then it starts to show up in your actions where you could have done a good deed for that person you are no longer you're doing your, your, your actions are different so the more you hold these things in you they produce this they, they grow inside you it changes the way you think the way you feel the way you speak the way you act it changes it changes you it changes your intentions it changes you we don't want these kind of things growing in us we want to have the Holy Spirit of God in us, growing, producing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's what we want in us. We want the fruits of the Holy Spirit growing in us, producing fruits. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? They're found in Galatians chapter 2, verses 22 through 23. And it says, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the things that we want in us. Growing. These things can only come from the Holy Spirit. You say, yeah, but that person has, uh, has peace and they don't have the Holy Spirit. It's a short-lived peace. It's a superficial peace. It's not a peace in the middle of the storm. It's a kind of worldly peace where as soon as hecticness happens or a corona pandemic happens or, or something happens, <gasps> the earth beneath their feet starts to shake. They lose their peace. In other words, it's a peace, a superficial peace in a, in a small world that they create for themselves. As soon as they take, they're taken out of that small world, the, the peace is gone because it's a short-lived peace, it's a superficial peace. We're talking about the peace of Jesus. Jesus says, my peace I give to you, my peace I live with you. We're talking about the peace of Jesus, which is peace in the middle of the storm. Regardless of any pandemic, regardless of hecticness, regardless of whatever is happening, we have peace, steadiness, calmness in the middle of the storm. So these fruits of the Holy Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, these, these, these fruits are only found, or can only be produced with the Holy Spirit in you. Another one, it says, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is love. You see, well, I love and I don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but it's a conditional love. The fruits of the Holy Spirit is an unconditional love. You see, many people out there love, but they love to a certain level. They love to us to, uh, as long as the, the conditions are met. It's a conditional love. I love you as long as you give me what I want. I love you as long as you don't do that. I love you as long as this happens. I love you as long as. I love you, but, you see, we're talking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They're unconditional. They're unconditional. They're the real thing. They're the real deal. See? And so we, we don't want 
the enemy things growing in us because as long as you leave these things in you the more they grow we don't want those things growing in us we want the holy spirit in us producing fruits of the holy spirit which is the, the fruits i've just uh, mentioned now to have the fruits of the holy spirit you need to have the holy spirit it's obvious to have the holy spirit you must first accept jesus christ first of all and that's just the order it is you have to first accept jesus christ after the accepting Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God sends his Holy Spirit to come and live in you. Without Jesus Christ, God does not send his Holy Spirit to live in you. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one gets to God the Father except through me. There is no way to God except through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the mediator. And the Bible tells us that there is only one God and one mediator between God and man. And that mediator is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the middle man. There is no other way to God. And so, first of all, we need Jesus Christ in our hearts before we can receive the Holy Spirit. After receiving the Holy Spirit, and we start being Christ-centered and Spirit-led, the Holy Spirit starts to work in us, producing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which are the fruits we've just spoken of. And so, we don't want the works of the enemy growing and building up in us. We want the fruits of the Holy Spirit being produced in us. And to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we need Jesus Christ. We need to be walking with God and not with not in the flesh, not with the enemy, not with not in the flesh. You see, the the, the uh, walking with the enemy, knowingly or unknowingly, walking in your flesh produces different things. That has nothing to do with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That produces completely different things, and those different things are found in. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21 which says the works of the flesh see when you're walking in the flesh you will do the works of the flesh in other words the actions of the flesh when you're walking in the flesh you will act out the things of the flesh you will show up in the world as that person that is living in the flesh it says the works of the flesh are adultery fornication Fornication is when you're having sex outside of marriage. You're not married with that person, but you're having sex with them. And it's happening everywhere. It's my boyfriend. It's my girlfriend. That's, for, that's called fornication. That's the sin. It continues to say, the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. In other words, sexual behavior, idolatry, witchcraft. Let me start again because we had a visitor the works of the flesh are adultery fornication uncleanness lordness which is sexual behavior idolatry idolatry is you know you've got people worshiping these icons it's an idol when you create an idol out of something but it's not just the the uh, uh, icons people worshiping icons anything you put before god is an idol Anything you put before God. It could be a person, a thing, a situation. Yourself is some idol. Idolatry. False gods, false religions. Idols. These are all idols. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Contentions. Which means disagreements. Dissensions. Which means discord. Heresies. Envy. Murders. Drunkenness. revelries which means alcohol and loud parties and all these crazy parties and it continues to say everything of this like manner you know these are the things that <clears throat> that grow in you when you when you're walking in the flesh when you're walking in the ways of this world when you're walking in the carnal mind when you're walking in the ways of satan when you're walking in the ways of sin we don't want these things being produced in us we want the uh, spirit we want the holy spirit in us producing the fruits of the holy spirit so you need to ask yourself are you walking with god or are you walking with the devil some people are walking with the devil knowingly some people it's unknowingly they don't know they're just in, in big great deception all of them are in big great deception otherwise you wouldn't be walking with the devil but that that's how it is you need god you need to walk with god you need to walk to him, with him. God wants to walk with you. He doesn't just want to instruct you and say, oh, go and do your thing. God wants to walk with you. That's how much he loves you. He wants to walk with you. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. God, God loves you. You need God. Don't walk away from him. Don't walk away from him because the devil lies to you saying that, oh, you're not good enough. Don't walk away from him and, and hide due to shame like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. Don't uh, feel guilty and try to uh, hide from God. Because these are the, the devil is a liar. These are the lives of the enemy, the lies of the enemy. You know, or you should be guilty. You see, the same evil enemy that is influencing you to walk in these sins is the same evil enemy that's going to tell you after that you should feel ashamed of yourself. You should feel guilty. You know, God doesn't want to see you. You know, stay away from God. It's the same. It's the same evil enemy. Don't feel guilty. Repent. Have sorrow for it. Regret it. Repent. Don't feel guilty. Because we have all sinned. And the Bible tells us we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. So what you need to do is to don't hide from God. Don't turn away from God when, when you've done something wrong. You need to repent. Just repent and get it right with God. That's what you need to do. That's the right approach. Repent and get it right from God. I've heard from so many people, different people, people that don't even know one another, to say, oh, it's a group of friends and that's why they're all saying the same thing. No, I've heard from different people. They don't know one another. They're different locations. They couldn't possibly know one another. And I've heard them say the same thing, which is a lie of the devil. God can't forgive me. I've just done too much. I asked God to forgive me last night. I've, I've fallen into the same temptation. I can't go back to God again. I can't pray because I've just done this. You know, these are all the lies. People say, so the Satan is saying the same lies, feeding the same lie to multitudes and multitudes and multitudes. Why did you think God felt the need to put in the Holy Bible that Adam and Eve, after they sinned, they felt ashamed and then they, they hid from God? Because God knows this is the lie Satan is using on many people. I can't pray. I've just done that. I can't ask for forgiveness again because I asked for forgiveness yesterday and I've done the same thing again. It's a lie. The devil is a liar. These are the times you need to be moving closer to God. You see, the devil will have you think that, you know, you uh, shame, guilt, I've done too much to hide from God. Because when you hide from God, you're like a lamb away from the herd. An easy target for him to prey on. That's why he's doing that. That's why he lies. You see, in situations like that, just repent. Just repent and get it right with God. This is not a time to be moving away from God. It's a time to get it right with God. Get it right with God. After all, Peter said to Jesus, Jesus, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother and sister when they sin against me? Seven times. Jesus said, no, not seven. Seventy-seven. Unlimited forgiveness. This is God telling you, he's showing you his nature. The same, it's the same unlimited for the same unlimited forgiveness God is asking from you is the same unlimited forgiveness God has for you. Satan will always come in and twist the word of God and change it and cause you to believe a lie. God has that same unlimited forgiveness for you. So in situations like that, it's a time to turn to God and receive that unlimited forgiveness. Considering it's a true repentance from the heart, you really regret doing it. And don't be like those hypocrites who say, well, I don't regret doing it, but let me just ask for forgiveness too so my conscience can feel better. And so, uh, and then I'll go and do it again. No, it doesn't work that way. So, so during these times, you need to repent and get it right with God. Because I promise you, and I'm in a good position to be preaching what I'm going to say now. Because I've been there, done there. No one is too far gone for God to bring them back. No one is too broken that Jesus cannot fix. No one is too lost for Jesus to save. No one. And I've been there, done that. When I was homeless, when I was in drug addiction, when I was in prison when i was in crime when i was in lying stealing jealousy drunkenness uh, uh, 
new age uh, 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 demon activities you know because the new, new age is all demon witchcraft and that's all putting it lightly anyway my story my testimony is in my book you can find the link to that below my new age this is my my crime testimony my drug testimony how jesus saved me and my life was always saved by Jesus. Uh, my new age testimony is found in the new book that's coming out now, which is already finally from New Age Occult to Jesus Christ. That will be published in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But, you know, no one is too lost, too broken, too far gone for God to bring back. No one, no one, no one. So you need to stay with God and he will, he will save you. He will forgive you. He will change you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. And he will show you why you were created. He will show you why you were created. He will show you the purpose he has for your life. But I can't find my purpose. Because the purpose God has for you is not ready to be revealed to you. Because you're still dealing with a mess. That you're not turning to God for. To fix. God wants to fix it. So God will show you why he created you. He will show you your purpose. And he will, he will take you by the hand. And he will show you step by step how to walk that purpose he will show you how to walk that path so you can walk the walk he will show you he will he will show you greater mighty things which you do not know there are so many things that god wants to show you that you don't currently know but you know you're, you're not turning to him to find out these things to know these things to have these things revealed in other situations, you're just so much drowning in the mess and you're not ready to let go of that mess. Maybe you're still in denial. I'm not walking in mess. So why? God's not... You're not in a position to know the great and mighty things of God. You're not in a position to know your purpose. Because it will just be... It will be like throwing treasure down the cliff. You just go to waste. You're not, you're not in a mental capacity. To understand these great and mighty things. To understand the person. Let's say for example God gives you your purpose. Okay you're still drowning in that mess. You probably brush it off. Do more harm than good. So come to God and he will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. He will help you walk the walk. He will do great works through you. He will do mighty works through you. He will take you from that darkness. He will take you from that nothingness. He will take you from that mess. And he will put you on a high rock. So you can be the light that shines in the darkness for the blind to see. I can't even begin to imagine what God will do in our lives. He will turn you into a mighty weapon of spiritual warfare in his very hands. A mighty weapon of spiritual warfare. Imagine being the, the tool in the hands of God. Imagine God being in God's hands. He's using you as a tool. There is nothing that can touch you. There is nothing that you can't do through Christ who strengthens you. God will create the impossible through you. He will advance you to advance his kingdom. And it's all... For the glory of God the Father. So, with that being said, the book can be purchased below. My next book is coming out from New Age Occult to Jesus Christ. That should be published in a few days. Stay tuned for that. I'm very excited about that. I received a lot of spiritual warfare warfare regarding that book, but it's all done and dusted. Enemy didn't want that out, but it's coming out. And I'm trying to release a book every three months. So after this one is published, end of the week probably, then in three months from now, the next one will be published, mm -hmm. The Great Deception. Mm -hmm. And after that, after three months, the next one will be published called uh, A Mighty Weapon of Spiritual Warfare in the Hands of God. So until next time, God bless you. If you need deliverance or prayers, email us. And uh, if you would like to donate to our ministry and advance what we are doing, or what I am doing, it's just me. It's what you see here. Uh, and the Christ living in me. Uh, then you can donate to my ministry. And until next time, God bless you. Peace be with you.